My theory, in America anyway, is that the higher you go in most organizations, the thinner the air. And because the air gets thinner, it's harder to support intelligent life. So the higher you go, the dumber the people. Hi, this is Danny. Uh, I'm with a guy, Kawasaki. We're going to talk about like how the evangelism and the digital marketing at this age world. So, Guy, you say it like evangelism is the process of selling a dream. Can you explain that? Sure. Evangelism comes from a Greek word meaning bringing the good news. So what an evangelist does is bring the good news. I brought the good news of Macintosh, a computer that made people more creative and productive. I am currently the chief evangelist of Canva. This is a service that enables people to create beautiful graphics. So evangelism is all about bringing the good news. And the difference between evangelism and most sales is that sales typically has your self-interest at the core. I need to make my commission, my quota, my revenue. Evangelism has the other person's best interest at heart. So I want you to be more creative. I want you to be more productive. I want you to have better graphics. Good news for you. I see this familiar of being evangelist and the priest. And the product <laughs> is the religion, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So what is the best way to sell that dream to the consumer? Like, is it like you, you expose the evangelist uh, to bigger platform or like? I think when you try to evangelize something, there's probably three or four key selling points. You should explain those three or four key selling points. And then inevitably, if a person or a company is open to being evangelized, they're going to tell you which of those points resonate with them. It could be productivity, cost savings, creativity, uh, financial stability, whatever. You know, four, four kinds of variables. So everybody sort of tells you how to sell to them. You have to be smart enough to shut up and regurgitate, though. Not everybody gets that. So we need to listen before we talk, basically, right? One would hold. Let's say like you have a great product, you have a great evangelist. How you communicate to this community? Like, do you have any tips for that? Communicating to the other 99%, 99%. not the 1%. Not the 1%. Well, the 1%. well, theoretically, the 1% will communicate it for you, uh, right? I mean, that's part of why you want evangelists to go out and spread the good news because a company can't do it by itself. So Apple had tens of thousands of evangelists who believed that Macintosh was good news. It wasn't just me, I was a paid evangelist, I was an employee. But there were tens of thousands of people who ran user groups, belonged to user groups, who loved Macintosh. And their motivation was truly pure because they weren't Apple shareholders, Apple employees. They did it because they wanted their friends, their relatives, their acquaintances to be more creative and more productive. There any tips like to maintain the image, to maintain like, you know, being Guy Kawasaki? Uh, I think a, a great evangelist, by definition, has to be a good demonstrator. You know, I've been emphasizing the quality of the product or service, saying that's 90% of the battle. And I like to call this guy's golden touch. So guy's golden touch is not whatever I touch turns to gold. I wish that was true. <laughs> guy's golden touch is whatever is gold guy touches. And what I'm trying to communicate here is that the key to evangelism is to find or create a great product or service because it is easy to evangelize a great product or service. It's very hard to evangelize crap. So if you want to be a great evangelist, touch gold. And I, I also believe that you have to ignore people's titles. I don't use it as a buzzword. I'm just telling you that, you know, when you want to evangelize something, ignore people's titles. I could almost make the case the higher the title of a person, the less you should evangelize them because my theory, in America anyway, is that the higher you go in most organizations, the thinner the air. And because the air gets thinner, it's harder to support intelligent life. So the higher you go, the dumber the people. So what you should do is you should work with the lower and the middle part of the corp company because that's where the smart people and the people who truly know what they need work. So you should go with them. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now I have to change my title. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, guy. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and I think we're just about to wrap up. All right. Thank you. All right. It's a real pleasure. Thank you. Done.